look at uh, today's match. It's uh, Pandemic Legion versus the Godfathers up first. Now, this is still the winner's bracket. We're going to have a few winner's bracket matches first before we move back down into the loser's bracket and then back up to the winners later on today. So, for this match, uh, obviously, uh, PL very strong. I, I think that they've got my vote. Uh, I like what I've seen from Godfathers, but I think PL's got this. Fozzie? I'm going to go with PL on this one. I think Godfathers are a strong team as well, but uh, PL is probably going to take it. Yeah, whoever doesn't vote for PL on the desk, they're going to have something weird in their drink, so <laughs> just keep that in mind. Uh, yeah. I'm going for PL, definitely, for sure. Yeah, I'm just going to have to agree with that. PL, especially in the, the last match they had against Nihilist, that bombing run, I'm excited to see good things from them. All right. Uh, I think we're just about ready to cut to the booth and let our commentators have a go at uh, analyzing the fleet comps. We do we do have the bans in for this match, the Manticore and the Nemesis being banned by PL, looking oh. to avoid those bombers, and the Godfathers banning out the Tengu and the Kitsune. So, let's go to the booth and uh, get the match underway. All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm Sir Squeebles, joined by the delightful CCP Rise for PL versus Godfathers. Good way to kick off the morning. I skipped coffee because I knew this was coming. Uh, right off the bat, a flagship on the field. Uh, that's a flagship Balgorn piloted by, let's see, Dankel1001. So probably some money on that ship, but both of these comps are awesome, and there's a huge spite pick in here. <laughs> yeah, so uh, not only the flagship costing a lot of money, also those two Malices showing up on the PL team. They put those at zero on the beacon. Uh, we've seen people get baited out by Malices already this tournament, and uh, PL's kind of going for the same thing. They've got them right at zero. Uh, the rest of their team backed up by uh, that flagship, Balgorn, Vindicator, Amur uh, Eos, um, Oniros, uh, four Bombers, the two Malices, and two Blackbirds, and then... Uh, and the Domain Navy issue is sitting at zero as well, but the Malices flew right by. They're flying directly into the enemy team, presumably going for these bombers, and if they do, uh, I think it will end quite well. So, already Newt's on the Vindicator of the PL side. You can assume that uh, probably the Navy Domi got up to him. Makes the most sense. Yeah, that Domi's real close. The the battleships on the PL team definitely didn't try to get away from him. He's, he's uh, yeah, just going straight after that Vindicator got Newt's on him. Um, and that Vindy taking huge yeah, damage already. That's not good at all. Um, he is going down. He's getting reps, so he might stabilize a little bit. Uh, meanwhile, there are still these two Malices in the backfield uh, of the Godfather's team, and they are presumably wreaking havoc, but it's hard to see just yet. Up until that Vargas goes into super low shields, and he's not going to survive. There's no way. Reps are on him, but he's not going to make it through this. Yeah, Malice is actually just pouncing straight for the Vargas as well. They're just all on primary right now, basically. A um, little bit of harassment maybe on the Lodgy, but Vargas going into structure fast and, wow, already down. Yeah, that's a really bad sign. So, uh, Dankel 1001 and the Balgorn was right on top of him. <laughs> That's going to shut down your hardeners for sure. This Navy Dominix is really going to struggle. Presumably he has blasters somewhere in between the newts. Um, that would make sense, but the Vargas going down for the Godfather side is a really, really bad sign. They do have webs on a Malice and web on a Purifier. That Purifier now getting reps, so nice job by PL's Lodgy to keep that bomber up. Really, I mean, there's damage going on to PL, but not enough to keep them nervous at this point. And look at the control bar for PL all the way up like yeah. no space on the side i'm pretty sure it goes behind our heads tons of tons of neutralizers kind of all over the place making it really hard for godfathers to tank everything uh navy scorpion going into low shields already took very little time considering how much tank that that ship can actually field and yeah even though godfather's doing a good job spreading damage across the pl team trying to make them work to keep the bombers up while keeping a lot of pressure on the vindicator from the navy dummy it's just not doing enough uh, the control bar really probably telling a story yeah i mean it definitely tells the story not to mention the vindicator uh, uh, obviously huge amounts of damage coming out there. The Balgorn, though, is, is damage fit. So he has lasers. He's not just a new boat in this setup, and they can fit, obviously, uh, faction damage mods, uh, or more than faction damage mods, up into uh, Officer. So that might be the case here, because they are sledgehammering this Navy Scorpion, who now has a tiny bit of structure. No, just kidding, he, no structure. Yeah, no structure. So, so that that hurts bad. Obviously, the core going down quick here. We'll see if they move to the Navy Domi next. Now, it looks like they're maybe going to go for the Godfather's Lodgy, but at this point, it's just going to be harder and harder, of course. I mean, a match with a lot of neutralizers, the, the longer it goes on, the harder it gets to break tanks, and they weren't able to get it done early, so I don't know how they could expect too late. Yeah, the Claymore of Nakuno is burning away. Uh, he is running from one of the Malices, so he's about to be nuded. Um, again, not that it matters. At this point, Godfathers, uh, unless some MJDs get used, I don't see any way back from this. So, uh, a lot of money on the field from PL. That's one thing for important sure. to mention. Not the first time we've seen Malices in the tournament, but for them to bring their flagship and field two alliance tournament ships, 
they weren't going to risk going down to Godfathers on this. Not to say this is maybe their best comp, but they have money behind this. They clearly have experience everything they're flying. So is it surprising for PL to win? Not really. But uh, it's always hard to see a team as good as Godfathers lose without really any retribution whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they didn't even get any of those bombers. Uh, part of that was some really good logi work and uh, positioning on the PL side. They be me down during the middle of, of that, and uh, so, yeah, just not much left. Support starting to go down. What do you think, you know, if the Malices obviously are something not every team has access to. Right. Um, how does this comp do without it? I mean, if you if you just do the flagship and then you bring maybe some Vengeances instead or, you know, somehow get some uh, Confessors in there or something. It, it could still work, obviously. I mean, uh, PL especially, if they were to change those out for a number of different ships, I would say Hard Tackle is the best thing to trade that out for. Mm. Um, it could still work because you still have an insane amount of control in the Balgorn. You've got the webs from the Vindicator. However, another good team can screen out that power now. So right. two good tackle freaks can take the Balgorn and take the Vindy and hold them somewhere else. These Malices not only can shut down a ship on the Godfather's side, but they can shut down the tackle that would shut down your flagship Balgorn and your Vindy. So, um, <laughs> a lot of shutdowns. Uh, well, you know, it, they're a shutdown team. Uh, <laughs> I look forward to the number of keywords that are going to get used on the analyst desk after this. Um, I think fidelity is going to come up. Uh, I think there's going to be some smug smiles from a man in a in a sweater. Absolutely. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. For, for the first time, I'm looking forward to that. Purifier going down at Atron and a Merlin, uh, just proving that they can survive. Uh, but there's no point. Uh, maybe going for the boundary. Just kidding. They're both webbed. But... <laughs> I mean, tough break for the Godfathers. It, yeah. it really is. What, can we blame it all on their, like, what do you think about the, the Barghest kind of, like, more long oh. range combined with the Navy Dom? I mean, we didn't really talk I, about the I Navy I forgot Domi to talk all. about the Navy Dominics. Let's talk about the Navy Dominics. All right. Just you Quick, and I. though, because this Merlin's going to go down. They'll but, be fine. The Atron's right, going to hold Let's on. Let's just do it, you and uh, I. PL, give me a minute, please. So the Navy Dominics, why would you bring in Navy Dominics? Why? There's an entire ad about how much I hate the Navy Dominics. And you know why I hate it? Why? Because it doesn't apply damage. Yeah. It has tons of damage. It doesn't apply damage. It, it might have actually applied some damage okay, in this fight. But I mean, half its damage is from drones, which are probably right. always going to apply. Ogre once. He did drop Ogre once at the beginning of the mm -hmm. fight, but he didn't apply damage. That's really what lost them this match. I feel <laughs> comfortable <laughs> saying Navy that now. not applying damage. Yeah, the Bargus, the Navy Scorpion, obviously those are two really good cores. They've brought Bargus, I believe, both of their other match. Yeah, they've yeah, had they Bargus did. in both mm -hmm. their previous matches and done really well. Mm -hmm. Um to mix it with an, so a Bargus uh, mobile missile platform, Navy Scorpion, not so mobile. You can definitely put a prob mod on them, but they're more sort of cores. You expect them to get locked down, you worry about their projection, and you rely on the really good tank. Navy Dominic's just terrible. Like, it, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I cannot express to people that 17 points that should never be on the field this late in the tournament. And I would love to be proven wrong, but I won't, because they're All right, well, thanks for giving us the time for him to go through that PL. The match <laughs> is now over, PL taking it convincingly, and so we'll go back to the desk, guys. status has been lowered. Welcome back uh, to the commentary desk. Uh, I hope that you guys tuned in there to the commercials and saw uh, Rick's Javik's wonderful Battlecruiser posters. Uh, those are still available, I think. And, and a shout out to Rick's Javik's, uh, who is certainly active on Twitter. And I, I believe I spoke to him last night. Uh, Thanks for tuning in, and also thanks for your great artwork. Anyone who wants uh, some nice uh, Eve presentation up on their wall, that's, that's a great way to do it. Uh, I guess Pandemic Legion putting the Godfather's heads up on their walls. Uh, that's yeah, that's I mean, one fight down. That was quick. The Oneros was, was on the match. spot. Yeah, yeah. He was keeping people alive, and, and they just the Navy cool. Dominix was unable to apply the damage that yes, it needed yes. to. It seems that's that one of our commentators was uh, triggered by the Navy Dami, but mm -hmm. you know what? That right there is just showing why PL is always a force to be contended contended with and why they are always placing very highly 
in a lot of tournaments. Yeah, yeah, that was that was quite beautiful. It made me very relieved. I'm glad PL pulled out the big guns to start off with, just so I can not have a heart attack. <laughs> um, PL do play again today at the very end of the day, so mm -hmm. one of the teams that gets to, one of the few teams or several teams, I guess, I get to play twice. They're going to be playing the winner of our next match, in fact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ronin or Shadow Cartel, which yeah. should be quite quite high quality mm -hmm. as well. But the uh, the PL match is quite wonderful to watch. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw that control bar. That thing was off the hook, as the kids say these days. It, 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 it exploded <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it just stayed up there. I have yep. to say, uh, Cheeb and Arcat, both of your Malice Pilots on uh, PL were really, really good in splitting their um, newts across what primaries were as far as going with the bar gets initially. And then immediately I saw the other Malice just go right over to the Simi and just cap it out. Yep. I mean, really good piloting, really comfortable too, because I mean, those ships are 120 plus billion isk and they're frigates. Uh, just to have the confidence and the trust in the rest of the team and just the ability to make plays like that. Yeah, they were really definitely, definitely quite stressful to fly. One of the most unflappable pilots that PL had, his name was F. Mercury. He was flying uh, an Utu uh, two Alliance Horns ago, and he got within maybe 500 meters of the border, of the uh, edge of the arena, and uh, he just tried to juke people out, and uh, it, he died. But, I mean, he died a warrior's death. Uh, uh, so, yeah, really, really uh, heart-wrenching to... Uh, fly those ships, so they did a great job. It's if, unfortunate to see them go down, but it is great to see them in use, and of course, yeah. this format is actually probably one of the best places to, yep. to bring them out and use them. Totally, yeah, just definitely. Go and rat. It's great. There, it's a place where you know you can take advantage of their abilities, and it's also a place where you know you're not going to get dropped by, like, 500 super caps. And, and you could almost argue with the prizes that are given away as far as the skins and the, the ships, the, the cruisers and the frigates, that it's a worthwhile investment. You know, yeah, definitely. Up on if you the grid, do well, yeah. You know, I mean, if you get if you win, you get fifty mm -hmm. at the end. Exactly, so exactly. You're just risking exactly. two for fifty. I'm good at math, I guess. So it's totally worse. <laughs> I'm not an accountant. I'm but. glad we have you here to handle these difficult numbers. <laughs> yeah.